Hi, everybody. Welcome to Fabulously Fun Trips. I'm your host, Greta Smith, owner of Savvy Travel Design, where I plan fabulously fun trips for my clients to share with their favorite people. Here on the show, I introduce you to representatives from my favorite travel companies so that you can ask your questions and see all the amazing experiences that are out there for you. Um, tonight, I am so excited to introduce you to Linda Heckman from American Cruise Lines. Linda, welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. And thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So American Cruise Lines is American River Cruising and also small ship, um, some ocean cruising, yes? Coastal. 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 Coastal vessels on both sides, which are ocean certified, yes. Okay, so this is going to be a really, really interesting episode, guys, because this is going to give you, there's a ton of variety in what American Cruise Lines does. It's not just, we were talking before we went live um, about how there's kind of a conception that it's, it's the Mississippi River, which totally is, and it's really, really great Mississippi River, but you're, I think you're really, guys, you're going to be impressed with how many other experiences there are that are available to you. So once you've you know, tried that that classic Mississippi River experience. There's so many other things available once you've fallen in love with this with this cruise line. So um, that being said, Linda, I'm going to pop myself out and pop the slides in so you can show awesome. us some fabulous visuals that you've brought. Because um, this, I'm the, guys, this is exciting. I can't wait to see all of this. So I'm going to pop right. pop slides in, and Linda's going to go. Okay, we're getting there, almost. All right, there we go. Well, welcome everybody to American Cruise Lines. My name is Linda Heckman. I'm speaking to you from my wonderful home office in freezing cold Bowling Green, Kentucky, where we're not used to snow and we have lots of it. So I uh, just wanted to give you some information to start with about who American Cruise Lines is because we're not a household name. So let me tell you who we are. We are a U.S. registered and U.S. owned cruise line that is headquartered in Guilford, Connecticut. We also own the shipyard where all of our ships are built, and that is on the Chesapeake Bay in Salisbury, Maryland. So all those lovely vessels that you're looking at we're all built in the yard that we own. There are 13 currently in our fleet, and there will be a 14th coming this year. The ships are literally going to take you all the way from Maine to Alaska. So uh, we're going to move through these slides, and you can see where we go and the, what the ships look like and what we're all about and what sets us apart. One of the things that you want to see here is this itinerary. So look at that map of the U.S. 35 plus itineraries, actually 37 now, in 27 states. So if your bucket list has that you want to be in Maine and take the 3,000 mile voyage on the intercoastal waterway down to the Great Rivers of Florida, we can make that happen for you. In the meantime, if you'd like to do a lobster bake on the beach, that we can make happen for you as well. Hudson River Valley is for fall foliage viewing. It's phenomenal fall foliage. The Ohio River, we operate between Pittsburgh and St. Louis. Those are tributaries, of course, of the Great Mississippi River all the way into Pittsburgh on the Monongahela River. The Cumberland River is a relatively new itinerary for us. That is Memphis to Nashville. So let's get some uh, barbecue and blues on one end and some country music and hot fried chicken on the other end. We do come all the way into Nashville. We are able to make it under the bridges without issue. We will come all the way into Nashville and dock on Lower Broad Street. So you can walk the honky tonks if you want to do so. And that's a lot of fun, by the way. Or head up to the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville as well. The Great Mississippi River follows heading west and we do both the upper regions and the lower part. You can take the entire length of the river if you choose to do so for 21 nights. That would be the twin cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul to St. Louis, St. Louis to Memphis and Memphis all the way down to New Orleans. Now I will tell you the most popular itinerary we have is going to be the lower Mississippi, has always been and always will be which you can do either round trip from New Orleans or you can do it one way, either Memphis to New Orleans or the reverse. Either way, you're gonna to get to see those beautiful, that beautiful country, the antebellum homes, the battlefields, 
of World War II, of World War II, of the Civil War. It's pretty amazing. It's a wonderful itinerary. Heading west, we're going out to the Columbian Snake Rivers. This is the last leg of the Lewis and Clark journey, and it is from either uh, Portland to Clarkston, Washington, which is basically Spokane being your closest air service. Clarkston's a very small place, or the reverse. It's the beautiful Wilmette Wine Valley. It's also well Hell's, Hell's Canyon is, if you want to take a jet boat ride on Hell's Canyon, and you get to visit Mount St. Hood. In the Pacific Northwest as well, out of Seattle, we operate the Puget Sound and San Juan Islands itinerary. That's round trip Seattle, and it is just beautiful. And yes, we go to Alaska. All inside passage, all uh, U.S. ports, we are U.S. registered, which means by law, we are not allowed to make a call outside of the U.S. So it's round trip Juneau in southeastern Alaska. It's an amazing itinerary on a 175 passenger ship that will have her capacity reduced due to the requirements of COVID. So that's a look at where we go. So start picking out your list of where you want to head to. And we're going to take a look at some of these wonderful itineraries. And keep in mind, these itineraries are done when the weather is the best. So we're not going to do New England in the middle of the winter, of course. We're going to do it when you go from Boston out and have a nice little uh, clam bake or lobster bake on the beach. These itineraries are wonderful and invite you to enjoy all that New England has to offer. And there's a lot on that itinerary. This is one of the beautiful mansions in Newport, Rhode Island on the Avenue of the Mansions that is included in the shore tour on these itineraries. The uh, mansions of Newport, Rhode Island are absolutely spectacular. The Vanderbilts had homes there and many, many, many wealthy people back in the day. These are amazingly beautiful and they are part of the shore tour. Now let's head a little further south. The southeastern itineraries, again, weather, being the best, we're gonna do this when it's a little cooler in the Southeast. So we're gonna go down the coast and we're gonna do an uh, American Revolutionary Cruise out of Baltimore and then we're gonna keep on heading south. And we're gonna operate from Charleston, South Carolina down to Amelia Island in Florida. It's a beautiful itinerary. I've been to both places many times, quite lovely. Now, all of our shore tours, uh, featured shore tours, I should say, are included complimentary for all of our guests. What you're looking at, by the way, is the beautiful Multnomah Falls. Lots and lots and lots of uh, engagements have taken place at this waterfall. This is the second largest waterfall in the U.S., by the way. Um, all featured shore tours are included complimentary for all of our guests. There is at least one each day, and they are typically the most popular of the shore tours offered on every itinerary. Premium shore tours are ones that you simply book on board. If you choose that you want to do something like that, they typically run between no $25 and $70 a person, depending on the itinerary. And our um, premium shore tours, or excuse me, our signature shore tours are the ones that do require pre-booking and prepayment as they are very capacity controlled. That Hills Canyon jet boat ride is one of those, also requires two nights to stay, and it is very capacity controlled on Hills Canyon. Beautiful shot of Savannah, Georgia. This always reminds me of the book, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. That's a beautiful shot. Savannah is a lovely city. If you've not been there, beautiful uh, circles around the city and parks, just quite lovely. What you're looking at now is Oak Alley Plantation in New Orleans. It's about 20 minutes outside of New Orleans. It's an amazing property that has been completely 100% restored. Uh, literally, it was destroyed to the point where cows were literally living in the mansion and breaking through the wall. So it's it's an amazing place. The uh, itinerary you see that's the full length of the Mississippi River starts in the Twin Cities. We do this both directions, north or south. Again, it can be broken up if people only want to do a portion. The river changes dramatically from the top to the bottom. So if you're looking at what you're going to do in, in the southern part of the Mississippi, it's going to be completely different when you're up north and seeing the beautiful rolling farms and such around uh, Iowa and Minnesota, beautiful. And on the other side of the screen is a lovely itinerary from St. Louis to Pittsburgh. That's an Ohio River trip that I was speaking of. 
It does call in Henderson, Kentucky, which is the uh, Kentucky side of the river across from Evansville, Indiana. And Evansville happens to be where the Audubon Society is headquartered and the shore tour that day is to the Audubon headquarters. Beautiful. And then there you see Nashville on the itinerary there as well. Uh, that's a lovely itinerary. It's just beautiful. And again, these are completely different than most that you've seen. Madison, Indiana is on that itinerary. There's a lovely boat regatta that's held there every year. I'm a Hoosier, so I'm familiar with that Madison boat regatta. It's a lovely place to visit. It's a picture of our brand new buses. These are owned and operated by American Cruise Lines. They are what we use for our transfers as well as for our shore tours. They are air conditioned, obviously. They are Wi-Fi equipped and there is a laboratory on board and there will be reduced capacity and seating on all of those uh, buses that we'll be using this year. By the way, we're coming back in the water next month. Yay. Now everybody recognizes this, of course. This would be the fabulous Graceland. Graceland, by the way, if you've not been there for a while, has been redone, not the mansion itself, but properties across the street. The Heartbreak Hotel is gone and Priscilla built what is called a guest house. The passengers of ours that do the deluxe Graceland tour stay in the guest house. It's beautiful. They get a private tour of Graceland and hold on to your hat. You get to have cocktails and hors d'oeuvres in the jungle room. The beautiful Pacific Northwest, that is Mount St. Helen with your top blown off. And it is phenomenal. So when you fly into to, uh, Portland, you'll see these mountains stacked up. Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, it's just amazing. The itinerary you're looking at here is from Portland on the right-hand side of the screen is Portland to Clarkston, uh, Washington. And then again, Spokane is the closest air service. It's a couple hours between Spokane and Clarkston. So just kind of time yourself that way for air service. You can take that itinerary either way from Portland to Clarkston or the reverse. And we start that itinerary in April and run it until about the end of October. Then after that, the weather is no good anymore. It rains too much. And the other itinerary you're looking at is that of um, the San Juans and the Puget Sound area. And that is done in the springtime, late spring for tulip time. And it's beautiful. Round trip, Seattle. There's a featured shore excursion, meaning everybody goes complimentary, getting to visit Mount St. Helens, and who doesn't want to? It's beautiful. There's those beautiful Mount Noma Falls again in Stevenson. Literally, the number of engagements that take place at this waterfall has got to be somewhere in the thousands. It is just phenomenally beautiful. Wonderful place to visit, and it's on the itinerary. This is a featured shore tour on the upper Mississippi. This is Fort Madison and it's in Iowa and it's an old historic fort and it's just really, really fun to go visit. Alaska. So um, Greta may have told you all, but maybe not. And some of you may be interested in Alaska. There have been some changes this year. Uh, the Canadian government has determined that their Minister of Tourism announced that they are not going to allow uh, cruise ships to call in Canada for 2021, so they'll see us in 2022. And most, I should not say most, all foreign registered cruise lines are required to make a call in a foreign port. We are not. So our itinerary is round trip Juno for seven nights. We also do a 10 night trip, but the majority of those are seven night trips, round trip Juno. There is a night complimentary ahead of time prior to boarding the ship, which is a long trip to Juno. So you're gonna to wanna to do that for sure. All US ports, all inside passage on a 175 passenger ship. It's phenomenal. This is one of the shore excursions included. This is the Skagway, in Skagway, it's the Yukon Gateway uh, Railway. And that used to call in Canada I don't know whether they're stopping in Canada or not. I would doubt it, quite frankly, because they're not allowing anybody even to cruise in Canadian waters. So I would guess not, but that is included as well. The yeah, railway is. Now, this is one of the premium shore excursions that runs between, you know, $25 and $70 a person. That's Acadia National Park in Maine. Um, Acadia National Park, by the way, is 
the place in the U.S. coast where the sun first hits the U.S. every day. This is a beautiful park and it typically runs about $35, most of which covers the entry fee into Acadia. Beautiful place to visit. Premium shore excursion, again, purchase on board would be the Dolphin Discovery. This is obviously in Florida. If you're heading down in the Great Rivers of Florida, you can uh, watch the dolphins on a very small ship, fun trip. There we go, we're back in Graceland again. This is the signature excursion. It does require two nights in Memphis and who cares, two nights in Memphis, take me. Uh, it is a wonderful itinerary uh, to visit Graceland and you know, go to the Peabody and watch the ducks in the Peabody and then walk across the street to the Rendezvous restaurant and have some of the best barbecue in Memphis you'll ever have in your life. You're about, to, oh, I don't know, a block and a half from Beale Street when you're at the uh, Peabody Hotel. And you get to go visit the King. And again, yes, beverages and hors d'oeuvres in the Jungle Room. Another one of our signature shore excursions is the Wilderness Trek. This is in Alaska, and it is a beautiful walking tour through the beautiful scenery in Alaska. Now, let me tell you about our fleet. There are basically three different types of ships that we operate on our fleet. What you're looking at is one of our new modern river ships. There are four in the series. The third has come out, the fourth will come out this year. The American Song, the American Harmony, the American Jazz have all come out and the American Melody will join us this year and that will complete our quartet. These ships are absolutely state of the art in every way, shape and form. The largest is 190 passengers. All the cabins are outside. All the cabins have a balcony and they are absolutely spectacular. And yes, this is a feature aboard these new modern river ships. You can board through the nose. Now, this is not something we use in all ports. Uh, New Orleans, of course, has a very spectacular, beautiful port facility, as does Baton Rouge, and out west Portland does as well. But a small place like Natchez, Mississippi does not, and we can do this there, or in the Dalles out on the west coast. We'll use it there. You're able to disembark the ship using the cone. It's just phenomenal. That's fun. This is some idea of what the cabins look like. This is an American song cabin. Now you see that's a king bed. Most cruise ships go no larger than a queen. This is a king size bed. All the beds in every cabin on every ship and every sailing can be split into two beds. So if you want it made as a king, we will do so. If you want it as two beds, we'll split it. All you do is tell us, do you want one bed or two? And we'll split it for you if you want it. Leave it as a king if you'd like it that way. And you see the balcony there as well. The beautiful atrium on these new modern river ships. Isn't that just beautiful? Light and bright and beautiful. We own and operate a number of authentic paddle wheelers as well. The American Pride, the Queen of the Mississippi, and the Queen of the West and the America are four of our paddle wheelers. They are authentic. Again, all the cabins are outside. All the cabins have a private balcony. Cabins are not quite as large as the uh, new river ships, and they have more of the flair of back in the day with Mark Twain, but they are just as well appointed as the river ship, the big river ships are. And this is going to give you some idea of what a stateroom looks like on the Americas. One of our paddle wheelers, that room has obviously been made with two beds. You see the balcony, very comfortable. This is the paddle wheel lounge on the Pride of America. And the third class that we operate are our coastal vessels. So on both coasts, we use the ship in Alaska, we use them on the East Coast. These ships are coastal cruising vessels and they are certified to be able to sail in the ocean waters. Again, all outside cabins, all with balconies. 175 is the maximum capacity on any of our coastal vessels. And there you go, the American Constitution on the East Coast. That's one of her cabins with a veranda. Beautiful Sky Lounge on the Constellation. That's beautiful, light and bright. 
Uh, the difference between American Cruise Lines and others, and by the way, yes, that is a putting green up on the upper deck in which you are welcome to get up there and enjoy the sun and the weather. Uh, we in openly welcome you to use that putting green. Please just keep in mind, it's not a driving range. It's a putting green, but you are welcome to use it. So what sets American Cruise Lines apart? We have the largest staterooms and the newest fleet of any ships on the Great Rivers of America. All the cabins have private balconies. Complimentary featured shore excursions are offered on every sailing. Whoop. Sorry about that. Um, there's elevator access to all decks. Twice daily stateroom service. When you leave your cabin in the morning to go have breakfast and do your touring, your cabin steward will make your room and will turn down for you when you're off having dinner and doing the nightly entertainment. I'm going to come back to the gratuity. Complimentary Wi-Fi is offered on every sailing. Uh, locally sourced and beautifully inspired food. We shop a lot of farmer's markets when we can. There's a complimentary cocktail party that's offered every evening about an hour prior to dinner. That includes hors d'oeuvres as well. There is wonderful daily entertainment. We are the all-inclusive, all-American experience, all-inclusive. So um, we, again, by law, are required to have a minimum of 75% of our crew to be U.S. citizens. We choose to do 100%. All of our deck and engine staff, all of our hotel staff on every sailing and every ship are Americans. There is unlimited beer and wine available, both with lunch and with dinner. And then back to the gratuity, we do not ask for and we do not accept gratuities on board the ship. Again, that beautiful, spacious hotel room, hotel room, state room, lovely bathrooms on these ships too. Beautiful balconies with unobstructed views. Please have breakfast on your balcony and watch the wildlife, no matter where you are. If you're out in Alaska, for example, you'll see the puffins come by. If you have any luck, you might see an eagle and they're all unobstructed. There's that beautiful complimentary cocktail party that's offered every evening. Our dining rooms are single seating and they are open seating, meaning that you can come into the dining room whenever you choose between you know, 5.30 and 7.30 in the evening and you'll be seated for dinner. You may sit with whomever you want or sit with just uh, yourself and your spouse if that's what you choose to do. Not an issue for us because, again, we're not asking for a gratuity for our staff. It doesn't matter where you sit. You're going to get the same wonderful service no matter what. And there is no dress code. So the fashion police will not be there to tell you, you cannot come into the dining room unless you're properly dressed. Wow, that looks great. And the lobster is great, by the way. So the uh, food is regionally sourced and it's very inspired. So out West, you can imagine we're gonna get a lot of Dungeons crab or in, in the Pacific Northwest, a lot of wonderful salmon. Down in the uh, lower Mississippi, there's gonna be more Cajun influence. New England's gonna have a lot of this wonderful fresh seafood, lobster clams and so on and so forth. But the food is quite extraordinary. Every evening there's wonderful world-class entertainment, again, on every sailing. This is an enrichment lecture. This gentleman happens to be lecturing on the Columbian Snake River. Again, about the Lewis and Clark Expedition. You will learn lots and lots and lots about the Lewis and Clark Expedition. And if you're on the lower Mississippi, you're gonna learn lots and lots and lots about the Civil War. And I mentioned this before, but it's worthy of it again. All of our river cruises include one night complimentary hotel package prior to boarding the ship. That includes your hotel, it includes your breakfast the morning of embarkation, it includes your transfer to the ship and the porterage of your luggage. There's one of our American captains, all American built, flagged and crewed. And I think this might be our second to last slide. This is just another beautiful shot. Some of the awards that we've won, by the way, And our COVID protocol. So on all of our ships, we will have uh, medical personnel, shipboard and shoreside testing capability is available. We've coordinated, coordinated with hospitals in every port on every call in case we do need to remove someone from the ship that needs help. 
Touchless technology is on every single vessel. PPE and sanitation requirements, we send people PE prior to boarding the ship and we will also have it on the ship. Again, our ships are very small. The largest ship we operate is 190 passengers and that will be reduced by at least 25%. And we're offering a program we're calling Cruise with Comfort, which is to give you a little bit of, um, nah, make you feel a little more comfortable that if you have to cancel, you opt into our Cruise with Comfort program and you won't lose your money. And there's more details that Greta can give you on that if you're interested. And last but not least, and this is not on the slide, but I will tell you, uh, none of our cabins have any kind of shared ventilation. Every cabin has its own HVAC system. Every public area has its own HVAC system. Nothing is shared. There is no shared ducting on any of our ships anywhere. And I think that's our last slide. Hey there, sorry it took me a second to get back. Yeah, it's quite all right. <laughs> Linda, that was fabulous information. Thank you so much for bringing all of that for us tonight. I appreciate it very, very much. Um, I do have a couple of questions for you. Sure. So as far as average age for mm -hmm. American Cruise Lines, um, what tends to be like kind of your sweet spot? 60 and up. So we are, our, our clientele is typically people who are very well traveled. They probably have done a European river cruise in the past, definitely have cruised in the past, but have more than likely done a European river cruise in the past and enjoy the concept of that. And they have on their bucket list that they want to go to the top of the St. Louis Arch and you know those kinds of things. And we're able to do that for them. So we're typically gonna be 60 and above. Retirees, um, baby boomers, you know, which retire at, I heard it again today, the statistic is, 10,000 a day are retiring. Yeah, I see your eyes. 10,000 <laughs> baby boomers are retiring every single day in this country. And most of them have disposable income. Wow. And this is a really, really fun way to spend some retirement time. Absolutely. I mean, it's talk about rolling on the river. I mean, it's, you know, sit out on your deck, sit out on that beautiful upper deck and just relax, have a beverage and maybe something to eat and just, oh, it's just amazing. Bring a good book or your Kindle, it's great. Absolutely, especially the next couple of years, this is a great time for folks to check off some of those domestic trips that are Absolutely. on the um, yep. do you So average age is, is um, retirement. Do you allow, yes. or do you have a minimum age? No. We don't know. We don't get a lot of children either, by the way. But multi-generational groups are something that are traveling together a lot. So grandma and grandpa may want to take their children and their grandchildren. They're welcome to come. I don't have a children's program, but, you know, I mean, if it's kids that are like, if they love the Civil War, take them on the lower Mississippi. If they want to learn about the Civil War, if they want to go to the World War II Museum, which is phenomenal in New Orleans, they should go on that trip and enjoy that. We do have some connecting cabins, and there are some cabins that will hold you. Not okay. many, there are some. And the other thing I should mention to you as well, and I didn't mention this before, we are very single friendly. Very single friendly, and we do get into the singles. Not a lot of single cabins, and they go quickly, but we do have them. Okay, and that's good to know because I do find more and more that that is something folks are looking for. Yep. So that's definitely um, that's definitely a bonus. Um, and you mentioned that you guys are back on the water next month. What's your first sail date? We're going on the lower Mississippi in the middle of March. All right. Yay. I know I'm so excited. That is I'm excellent. To go. I'm, telling you, I'm so itching to go. <clears throat> and I used to live in New Orleans, so I can't wait to get back down there. I think there's a lot of us who can't wait to get back to going somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm going to I'm not seeing any additional um, questions coming through the feed. Okay. So I'm going to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. Um, and have a great night. We'll see you later. Awesome. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm Tom Relay. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I think that was fantastic information and so many 
really, really cool options uh, with American Cruise Lines. So if you have questions, um, you want to look at some specific itineraries or dates, of course, let me know. Um, really quick, I'm going to give you a, uh, I'm going to give you my travel tip for the week, and then I'm going to bounce on out of here. So my tip for the week is to take a backup credit card when you travel. If your primary card is lost, stolen, or God forbid, frozen on a fraud alert, uh, then you'll at least have a secondary source of funds while you get that sorted out. So, and of course, the backup tip is always to make sure you call your credit card company and let them know that you're going to be traveling because when you're typically in Milwaukee and they see a charge come through in Paris, they might not be so cool with it. So that's the backup tip on that one. Um, and usually that works, but every once in a while they drop the ball and, and uh, freeze it anyway. So always have that second card available. Um, real quick, next week I will be flying solo. There's been a lot of movement in the travel industry lately, a lot of things happening, um, regulations changing constantly. So I'm gonna give you a quick update about some of the things that are going on in the wonderful world of travel. And then coming up in the next few weeks is Celebrity Cruise Lines with, wait for it, the Galapagos Islands. Um, and then we'll also be talking with Luxury Gold, which is an amazing tour company. They have some really, really unique, awesome experiences for those discerning travelers who are looking for something a little different. So I'm excited to introduce you to them as well. Uh, if you have questions about anything you heard tonight or anything at all in the world of travel, go ahead and reach out. Uh, the, webs the website is www.savvytraveldesign.com. You can find me Facebook slash Savvy Travel Design, or you can shoot me an email, Greta at SavvyTravelDesign.com. If you missed any parts of the episode tonight, you can catch the replay on the Savvy Travel Design Facebook page. It will also be on the Savvy Travel Design YouTube channel. And if you need to get in touch with me, like I said, website, email, you can also DM me on Facebook or on Instagram. So folks, uh, this is Fabulously Friendships and I am Greta Smith wishing you love, light, and vacation daydreams. Ciao for now.